Have you ever been having a perfectly normal day at your big girl job when you randomly feel like you got punched in the stomach? You know, your heart kind of sinks to your asshole because you randomly think about how many bands have broken up or the fact that work tour will never be a thing again. Or maybe for you, it's that best friend from elementary school that moved away that you'll probably never get into contact with again and maybe even scarier, the idea that they don't even remember or think about you. Or maybe it's just the state of movies, music, entertainment in general, the fact that concerts will never be as cheap as they were again. I can't help but envy people with personality types opposite to mine in regards to their relationship with the past. Like my dad and his buddies talking about nonsense that happened in their early 20s, they genuinely light up and laugh like they're telling a story that happened last week. None of them appear to encompass this somber shroud that I find to accompany reminiscing. Like I genuinely cannot imagine remembering something dope that happened a couple years ago without being encompassed by grief for the fact that things have changed so much. It's so easy to romanticize the past and downplay or give no mitt any emotional adversity that you were going through at the time period that you have a tendency to idealize. Nostalgia can be detrimental in so many aspects of our lives, whether it's your brain remembering the praise that you got when you were at your lowest weight, but not remembering how shitty you felt or only remembering like the good parts of a relationship. I can never have a memory creep into my head without it making me incredibly sad to the point where it has, at times, hindered my enthusiasm to embrace change, in addition to my ability to wholeheartedly enjoy the present and stop dwelling on the past. When Hot Mulligan said, I felt that. Oxford Dictionary. I know. I know, another dictionary definition, but I swear I have a point to make. Defines nostalgia as a wistful affection for the past. And I think that's a lot of people's understanding of the word. Nostalgia leads some people to seek out like-minded friends. I don't know, like other worlds where your dad still sees you as his own. Maybe I'm not Mark who works at Arby's. Maybe I'm Onyx, the fortuitous slayer of the bright realm. You know, they can find ways to enjoy looking back on aspects of the past and maybe even incorporating elements into their daily lives without dwelling on it. Some people find a sense of emotional comfort from revisiting pleasant memories from their past as well. I can see how it might help some people feel connected to their origins and, you know, simpler times. Comparatively, however, the American Psychology Association Dictionary of Psychology defines nostalgia as a longing to return to an early period or condition of life recalled as being better than the present in some way which is definitely the primary feeling that i associate with the definition like i think that this definition better captures the sadness that i tend to associate with nostalgia yeah that sneaky feeling that makes you miss when everyone was watching the same shows on cable tv and dial up internet speeds today or rather i should say tonight or whenever the fuck you're seeing this we're going to be talking about the potential consequences if you don't find a way to start living in the present the concept of how do we reform our relationship with nostalgia or rather what can we do to prevent nostalgia from robbing us from the joy that we find in the present. I'm Kinetic Kel. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Subscribe if you're new. My parents used to be really good at scrapbooking. Allegedly. I'm the third kid. I don't know. They kind of gave up the effort by the time I came along. But for both of my older sisters, they had like baby's first year is completely filled out, all meticulously organized, captioned, decorated, and dated. However, eventually the effort was abandoned and all these boxes were filled to the brim with printed photographs. Some of them spilling over, all scattered, mixed up. While developed with good intentions, they were left untouched for months that led to years. This mountain of a memory hoard became the bleak constant reminder of lost time that it was in this particular window of time. Just a mechanism for my parents to guilt themselves for not keeping up with the physical keepsakes that scrapbooking produces. I don't know if it's genetic, but later in life I also became a huge memory hoarder that also fell behind on my scrapbooking. I remember being 21 and living with my best friend at the time and crying while we were smoking one night because I hadn't finished a scrapbook from senior year and I was just starting to fall behind and feeling like my mom. And she stated something that should have been so obvious, but like if you waste your early 20s romanticizing about when you were being 17 in high school, whatever, and then your late 20s romanticizing about your early 20s and just keep going, you'll never ever get to genuinely enjoy the present. As obvious as it sounds, that felt like such a huge revelation to me. Constantly comparing present day experiences unfavorably with nostalgic memories will inevitably lead to dissatisfaction and discontentment with your life indefinitely. It's a self-limiting paradox and becoming overly fixated on the good old days is a surefire way to ensure a lifetime of groveling in your own self-pity. There's also the risk that idealizing the past, like only remembering the positive aspects and ignoring all of the negative experiences and of course growing pains can distort your perception and hold you back from making real realistic assessments of situations in your current present day life. And yeah, maybe I am going to use another hot mulligan clip because things don't get better. Just different. A lot of the times I think the reason that memories from the past hurt so much is because I feel like there's so many things that I never got closure for in my life. 
but such is the human experience. Chinese philosopher Confucius once wrote something that you've probably heard some variation of, and that is to study the past if you would to define the future. And that's all we can do, learn from our mistakes and our experiences, but try not to mourn the time lost because you're only losing more time doing that. I've recently been trying to let nostalgia fuel creative inspiration as opposed to existential dread. Like y'all seen that little 70s babe on YouTube shorts. By setting clear goals and making plans for the future, it's a lot easier to make peace with the passage of time. This kind of ties back into my last video about existential dread and finding alleviation and creative outlets, but give yourself something to look forward to. Like how else can we alleviate feeling stagnated by nostalgia? Breaking down your goals into realistic, actionable steps helps channel your energy and attention into constructive things. And trust me when I say I'm hoping I can kind of take my own advice here because definitely something I struggle with, but in general, the only feasible way to reduce the very human inclination that we have to dwell on nostalgic memories is to foster excitement and fulfillment in the present. Start thinking about your long-term plans. Start eliminating all the short-term gratification nonsense that you do to fill the void. Start exclusively surrounding yourself with people that you see in your life long-term and, you know, taking the steps to build the future that you're excited to get to. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed. Again, this is not me like invalidating your feelings. Like I cry too often over the fact that we can never go back to the days of the Pierce the Veil, Sleeping with Sirens world tour. Missing cheerleading, like I get it, I do. But it as my stick and poke says, forget regret. Those days are gone, but not forgotten. All we can do is cherish them and already know what Pink Floyd said, like, you are young and life is long. Don't forget that. What is this, a ladder? Oh, thanks for not pulling that up. Thank you to my bestie Jericho for not pulling up the ladder and for giving me completely unsolicited, incredibly helpful both criticism and support, and for just overall encouraging me to keep posting. So class, I'm Miss Frizzle, this is the Magic School Bus, and the destination is my personal hell. Let's talk about the last couple weeks I've had. So three really devastating things happened this week, and no, we're not here to have a Kelly pity party and basically contradict the entire point of the video I just made, but there's two primary reasons why it's important for you to know this context. Okay, so bear with me, we're gonna like circle back around to it. So the first thing that happened is I just found out that all of my stuff recently got thrown away like my letterman all my trophies from my childhood every set list and pick I've ever caught at a concert so I've been making my peace with that second thing is that my computer was stolen and even more tragic I had two completely done videos on it that I hadn't backed up to iCloud so like I was only able to recover like half of this video and I didn't want to completely remake it so I've been stubborn about that and then thirdly on my way home from work yesterday I got in a car crash Oh, it has just not been my week. The first reason I've decided to share all this is maybe the obvious one that <laughs> obviously I've been lagging on my long form videos, um, but I promise they are in the works. Had a little setback, but I'm gonna get back on my grind. Secondly, it's I can't help but feel like a hypocrite. Like when I'm editing this video, like me flaunting my forget regret tattoo when I've been sitting here like groveling in regret and nostalgia a little bit. But I think that's gonna be my next video is like materialism and making peace with losing all your shit. I've had crazy exes like burn my shit. One time I had an ex take like all of my Walking Dead compendiums and put them in the bathtub with water and like a bunch of set lists and stuff that I cared about. Like people's houses burned down. Like I definitely understand that there's way more tragic things, but sometimes it's hard, especially when you're like a little memory hoarder. So anyways, I hope your week was better than mine. I hope my week gets better. I hope your week gets better. Please don't be too hard on yourself. Thanks again for watching. Consider subscribing. We are this close to a thousand. Kick this week's ass.